Hey everyone, it's Ashley Jones, Event Director at Marketing Showcase. Thanks for watching one of our recordings from Marketing Showcase Online. I really hope you enjoy it and hopefully I'll see you at another one soon. Right, okay guys, so, so here I'm here to try and dispel a couple of myths for you here. And here I want to sort of break down what it is to integrate marketing automation into your business and what it means and what the benefits are going to be and how you're going to be better as a marketeer. Ultimately, Force 24 is all about making you guys better, be faster, more efficient, and that way we can innovate. And that's how it all works. So, okay, let's see which button I press to move along the slides. It's not that one. It's not that one. Is it that one? It's that one. So firstly, my name's Adam and I am the CEO of Force24. I was the founder in 2010. So I actually believed I invented marketing automation. I hadn't. It just wasn't a big thing in 2010. And the thing, the big problem that I faced back then was marketeers were approaching us with technical challenges around how to build more effective communication sequences and how to handle data better and how to get more insight. And the technology at the time just wasn't supporting marketeers. So everything we've done is a little bit like Apple and the iPhone, really, in some respects, which is all about distilling down the science and making it as easy as possible. So that's sort of a little bit about, you know, why we're here. But my objective today is to show you how easily you can implement marketing automation in your business. And, and actually, I want to break down those myths and tell you what it actually is. I think... Actually, you know, I don't like calling out competitors, but MailChimp, you know, it's a great product, amazing company. They've done really, really well. But I think they've muckied the water a little bit by saying they do marketing automation. It's not about just sending out automated emails. It isn't. There's so much more to it than that. So, okay. You know, if anybody has seen me, in fact, can I just do this, the social experiment as I usually do? Has anybody watched one of my talks before? I can't even see the chat, so I'm just going to have to assume that you're all rapidly typing yes, 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 yes. If you have, you'll know that the same persistent themes keep coming across in what I talk about. I feel like I'm a bad record at some time, broken record at some times. Uh, I talk about the same thing because it's so important that you guys embrace this, first of all. And it's, I want you guys to lead your way in the organization. It doesn't matter if your organization doesn't yet respect that. They will. Marketing-led organizations are more successful than non-marketing-led organizations. So I want you to remember, you are the magic, you are the energy, and you are the glue. You're a very important cog in this wheel. I'm also hell-bent on finishing this presentation because anybody that has watched me in the last few presentations knows that I've run out of time. Now, first thing is, who can relate to this? Who can relate to exporting data from CRM, uploading data into a platform, finding a template, building a template, messing around with an email template, and then reluctantly pressing send, and then the moment you press send, oh God, I found a spelling mistake. Every single time, that's just me, I'm, I'm terrible at spelling. But the point is, that is a way of the past. That is the wrong way of doing it the effort that's expended on actually executing your campaigns is encumbering you from doing cool stuff, better stuff. And that's what we've got to break down. So what I want to do, first of all, is talk about what is marketing automation. Let's dispel that myth. So it's about automating everyday processes. I've got to get quicker. If I'm to do more, if I'm to innovate, if I'm to work alongside other businesses that are also innovating, I have to innovate to remain competitive. And I can't do that when I'm busy. I've got to store data. So data isn't about me holding up, pushing up spreadsheets every five minutes. Sometimes, yeah, I get not every business can integrate with an automation platform. I get that. But actually, I'm going to dispel that myth in a little minute as well. So storing data and tracking data, and this is not just what the sales team are doing or data from your new customers. This is what they're doing on your website. You should have an absolute clear view as to what everybody in your audience is doing on your website, what they're looking at. And that helps you then define how web design can help you learn more about your customers. How cool is that? Storing every customer that you've got, tracking everything that they look at, understanding the content that they engage with, and then mapping that back to the contact record so you know a bit more about them. That's awesome. So opportunity, uh, oh, sorry, outputting relevant communications. That's the key, isn't it? Ultimately, what is marketing? This is a difficult question. It's something that we've been rationalizing uh, uh, internally at Force24. What is marketing? And it's in the pursuit of advocates. 
you know, you, you've got a customer. I'm not a customer yet. And I want you to be a co customer. When you are a customer, I want you to become an advocate. So all the way along my chain is I want to create advocates. So we're trying to really understand what that journey looks like and make sure that we're developing tools that help you along that journey. So, okay. Firstly, not firstly, I'm probably about secondly now. Marketing automation is not. A lot of people think it's all about sending spam. It's all about this perception that if I've got lots and lots of triggered comms, I'm just outputting spam. And I just want to quickly remind you of something that I talk about quite often in my other webinars, and that's spamming versus cadence. If I'm nailing the messaging, let's talk to any one of you. If you think about a, a club or a society or a shop that you buy from regularly, they can email you every single day with great content about what you're interested in and you're lapping it up. Now, if you sent me those same messages, that's spam. Okay, so the difference between cadence, i.e. the frequency in which I talk to you, and spamming is simply the human at the end and how much I understand that human at the end. So it's not about that. It's not about being lazy, although I have often said it's the lazy marketeer's dream. It's not about being lazy. It's about freeing my time so I can innovate and do other stuff elsewhere. So when I'm 10 minutes here, 40 minutes here, 30 minutes there, 30 minutes, I'm connected to the wheels. And any marketeer that is connected to the wheels can't win in a fight against the marketeer that's hands off and, and running the department strategically. Being less personal, only for big teams. Now, this is one that I often see. Oh, we're too small for automation. That's perfect then, because if you're small, you're under-resourced and you need automation. That's the point. It's only for big companies with big budgets. No, that again is the point. It's not. What we tried to do is develop a price point that says any business, any business. If you've got a marketeer based on the average marketeer salaries, the investment that you make on Force 24 will liberate them far more than the cost of their salary that you've liberated. So the cost of marketing automation should never, ever factor into the, de the debate. If it does, then the supplier has got the price point wrong. That's the argument. So in theory, you can afford it. It is for you. It's not about being lazy, although it kind of can make you lazy if you want. Um, and it's not about sending spam. So really, really clear that we understand that. The process of automating is basically a case of taking all of those day-to-day -day things that I do, moving them into an automated process. I read somewhere years ago, and I've told you this on the webinars as well in the past, if your brain was in the computer, in a computer, and it processed at the same speed at which your brain processes, and you said, open Microsoft Word, to open Microsoft Word would take 88 years of your brain power when a computer does it in less than a second. And just think about that for a second. That just says that high availability systems where they can be used, should be used. And my brain is better. What a computer can never do is empathize. It can never do the things that I as a marketeer should be doing. So my job's secure. I'm, I know I'm golden, but it's not secure if I'm not embracing the things that make me more effective. We're becoming cyborgs. Is that the right word? I don't know, but it's, it sounds good, cyborgs. Was that, that's probably off of Star Trek or, or something like that. But anyway, it doesn't matter. But the process is quite simple. And it's not about a total, oh, this is too complicated. No, it's not complicated. It's only complicated if you don't apply the thinking to it that's needed. Now, again, as I said before, we're all about trying to say, build tools that say, okay, this is easy. You'll get it in five minutes. You'll pick it up in five minutes. And if you don't, we've kind of failed. And that's something that we, we really pride ourselves on. So the point there is, can I offload as much of my process into the into the automation engine and just liberate myself so that I can get away in front and I can start running campaigns rather than one-off tactical communications that take up all of my time. Okay, so there is with it a mindset shift that comes. And the mindset shift says you can't just keep thinking about things the way you are today in the future we have to change tools have changed where if we still thought like we did when we were plowing fields with horses and uh, oxen uh, as we do today with modern communications and modern uh, technology we'd be, we would not have advanced so we have to adopt new ways of thinking and that is part of our evolution as a marketeer and incidentally m most cmos uh, i read a survey i believe it was gartner i read a survey recently that said what is it that most most cmos are going to be looking for and that's data analysts and automation specialists so that says that 
me as a person, if I, as a human, want to progress in life, automation is one of those things that I've really got to get my teeth into. It's not a fad anymore. It's just the way it's done. Okay, so mindset shift. Key to effective communications, right? So firstly, what we find quite often, I see marketeers building complex emails, lots of things on it, lots of buttons. I want you to do one email, one message, one button, and send more. So with social media, we think nothing about putting four, five, two, six, however many social media posts a day or a week on. But yet I won't communicate with my base because, oh, that's too aggressive, it's too aggressive. No, actually that's not true. What Microsoft say is that you should be communicating with your audience, B2B, B2C, it doesn't matter, two to three times a week, that's optimum. And I'm not saying you've got to do that. What I'm saying is know where you are on the scale. Where are you? Are you once a month? If you are, that just is not enough. Partly because Microsoft and Google, who are basically the big ESPs of the world right now, they can't form an opinion of you because they only see you once every couple of weeks or once a week. Whereas if I see you every day to certain segments, but every day I'm seeing something from you, then I can give you a much better ride, a much easier, easier way through the spam filters. So one email a month is dead. That's not the way it's done. Can I ask anybody into their chat, if you wouldn't mind, who can remember an email they received yesterday? Yesterday, one email you received yesterday. Think about one email, not from a colleague, nothing internally, but this is a marketing email. Think of one email that you received yesterday. Now, usually there might be somebody that says, oh, I got this. And that's fine because usually if, if, I, if I bought from it or if I spent attention, I paid attention to it, then yeah. But nine times out of 10, we just can't remember anything you sent yesterday. So when I'm saying that, oh, well, my customers don't want this. The reality of it is they don't want the generic junk that gets produced. They want targeted, tailored comms, just like you would accept daily from your sports association, your whatever it is that you're interested in, the shop you really like buying from, whatever it is, if they've got daily insight to give me, you'll take it. And your customers are the same, or your prospects potentially are the same. So hello, twice weekly updates tailored to me. Yeah, that's it. That's what it is. That's exactly what it is. So it's a mindset we've got to do more, not more in one email, more emails with less, blah, 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 and build an actual campaign, an actual journey. Now, that gets really difficult if I'm doing it one at a time. So I can't ex I can't 10 times the amount of effort that I'm putting in right now because my process means I do this, I upload that, I do this, I do that, I download that, I give it to the sales team, I upload that, I do that. Can't do it, cannot do that. I have to get smooth, I have to get strategic. It's my job and it's in my interest as a human being to evolve in this way. Strategic thinking. So what this does is it says, you've got to break the process. You've got to look down on top and say, if that just automatically did that, i.e. sales CRM just automatically updated that, awesome. Oh, and by the way, it's updating it, but it doesn't have this piece of information that the sales guys use. It doesn't go into there. I need that. You need it. So you need it and it breaks the process. So where you find slow parts and you're encumbered because you're having to do something, think about it. How are you going to eradicate that from your life moving forwards? I know we all do this anyway, but it's just important that we understand what technology is all about. And that's what I'm here for today. So the key is it's about building relationships. I've got to consider triggered comms. Triggered comms are different. So most of us out there, we send out an email. We send out an email. Now, if you think about that, people in my list, they didn't say, they, they opted in perhaps, or some data, some relevant people that from, we've bought, whatever it may be from in a B2B scenario. Maybe they're, they're saying, okay, I'm happy to receive them. But they didn't say send it now. You said send it now. They might be in a meeting. They may be on holiday. There's lots of reasons. Triggered comms are about finding the right time to send to the right person. And that's really important. And that right time could be understood by the fact that they spoke to a sales guy three months ago, but haven't spoken since. The right time could be the fact that they were on your website yesterday. Or the right time could be the fact that they bought a product five hours ago. That Whatever, it doesn't matter what it is. And not always in B2B can we rely on that triggered data, but I can do it based on what you've been engaging with. So what you've done on our website, they're great triggers for me to work with. Okay, so let's now have a look at the auto components of automation and then you can see how that all fits together. So the first thing that we've got and we, we, we look at is integrated data. I've already spoken about this in the past. It's all the data in one place at one time. 
So what our product does and what other automation platforms on the, on the market do is they consume data from CRM. And that might be lots of things. It might just not be the contact object. It might be deals object. It might be whatever. They bought that, they subscribe to that, they do this and CRM, that's all there. We need to get that on that contact in the platform. That's fine, that's what our job is. And we talk about that actually, because uh, actually that's, that's coming in a second. And then we then overlay with all that CRM data, all the behavioral data, the attitudinal data that's coming in from what they did on the website and how they've engaged with our content. We overlay that together and we create segments. And those segments then make it easy for me because I just pick a segment and I start executing to a segment, knowing it's up to date, knowing it's right. And I'm doing my job, not messing around with spreadsheets. Now, sounds complicated. I know it sounds like there's a it's, it's like hours of scientists and, and developers coding in a room to make this all happen. It's not. It's easy. It's really easy. Tech has evolved to the point where products like ours, we have embedded applications, sorry, embedded integration applications. And those embedded integration applications basically allow us to build templates within minutes that can connect onto your CRM, that can then pull data, store it in here automatically. Now it gets a bit tricky if you're running an old fashioned server in the office that you have to kick every couple of days and it's got uh, you know some stuff in CRM that was 20 years old, it's still possible, but it's a bit, it's a lot easier when we start talking cloud-based technology for, for, for CRM and ERPs and this kind of thing. So don't think that it's complicated because that's our job. That's our job. And complicated stuff, we offload into us and the people that can do it. So we can do it. And remember what I said about price. It's not about, it should never be about price because your salary and your team's salary will way, way, way pay for this. Okay. So it's about having the data. It's then about an obvious point, automated campaigns. And what are automated campaigns? So we know that if I've got a message I need to get out the door to you, because I talk about this on all my webinars, is there's a one in six rule. And I was there before Boris was there with this one. One in six doesn't mean I've got one in six friends. It means I have to, if I've got a message I want to get out the door, I need to say it or iterate it six times. And I've got an example of how we do that in a moment. But I need to say it six times. Just like, you know, I, I've given the human argument on my webinars many, many times. I have to, first of all, introduce it, then give social proof then give gain, then give fear, then give logic, then give urgency. I think that's six. And so I can talk about my webinar that I'm promoting, for example, six times. And if I'm doing it two times, I'm at half, a third of the efficiency. If I'm saying it one time, I'm at one sixth of the efficiency, one sixth of the efficiency. So if I want to get my message out, I have to say it six times. Now it's up to you to understand that rule of six and say, actually in our audience, it's a rule of three, it's a rule of 12, it's a rule of whatever, but that's our broad brush rule of six. So if you imagine promoting a webinar six times with this whole data up, down, up, down, up, you're talking probably six, seven, eight hours, maybe, I don't know, but there's a, the total time to execute that webinar is massive. So you just don't do it. Now, instead, what you do is you build an automated sequence. Now an automated sequence should take you, we would say, we quote 15 minutes to build an automated sequence. That's got the emails in it, it's got the trigger points, it says, who do I wanna send it to? What should I do? When do I delay? When's the, whatever. And we build it out for this drag and drop journey builder. And it's designed to be so, so simple. But then once I've done that, that's 15 minutes, I just build the emails and I'll come on to emails in a minute, add them in, let them do it. But then next webinar, guess what? I duplicate the whole thing, change the emails, off I go again. So my time to execute, I then say, right, well, what let us down on that last webinar? Well, the landing page was a bit ropey. Well, let's spend time on getting the landing page right. Let's get the let's get the registrations up. Ah, uh, well, you see, we got last time we got loads of registrations, but not many people turned up. Well, that's all right. We'll build an automated journey that once they sign up for the webinar, we say, great, we can't wait to see you there. Two days later, we say this. The day of the webinar, we say that. The more, minute before the webinar, we send a text message. All of these wonderful things that you can now move on to do and to improve. I'm picking on webinars. You know, it could be anything. The point is, it's all about you offload your thinking, offload your effort into there, and then the system takes care of it for you. So, you know, I don't need to labor this point this much. You know, it's really easy. But the point is, we are compared as marketeers to Amazon, to eBay, to businesses like that that have billions of pounds spent on tech, developers, and they can create journeys that... We as consumers think, well, can't everybody do that? No, you can't. But actually using technology like this, you can get flipping close, that's for sure. Okay, so 
You know, I was talking about the emails a moment ago and iterating. One of the things that I also believe in is the commodification of the email assets. And it's about saying five minutes. So I talk about this. It's not really about how to implement automation, but it's something that I believe in. And it's about saying that my six emails, sorry, I know this is only four, but this six, this four emails, uh, what I'm not going to do is reinvent the wheel on everyone. So I iterate, I take the first one, I duplicate it, I iterate it, I duplicate it again, I iterate it, I iterate it. So my message and my construction is the same, but the words within vary. And I can use that for any, any different purpose. But the point is my six stream webinar now didn't take six hours to build the emails. It took 30 minutes because I just iterated them along. And you'll notice the simplicity, the simplicity of the wording. I'm not reinventing the wheel, I'm going with a, Microsoft also recommend 10 words, 10 words in your hero with one button. What goes beneath that, we have a bit more, bit more relaxed, but if you wanna get somebody's attention, you've got 10 words to do it and you should have one button. So that means great, that is the lazy marketer's dream because it means I'm not building complex table structures, blah, 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 columns. I hate that. Single column, simple, single message. It's key. And then what you do, Actually, do you know what? I'm not going to do that. Squint test. What I do then is I come back and I do a squint test. So when I've got my messages, this is, I talk about this all the time. I sit back in my chair, look at what we're doing, squint, look at it. And if I can still get the message, it's a win. If I can't, it's back to drawing board, do it again. But because it only took me five minutes, that's okay. And I'm not by the mind, I'm saying there's two components to building emails, content, construction. Content can take me as long as I want. I've got to write brilliant words. I've got, you know, that's where I should be spending my time. Excellent copy, excellent creative. Construction, five minutes. If it's more than five minutes, it's broken. You need to fix it, you need to improve it. So that right there is the squint test. And obviously you don't need to squint because we've already emulated the squint. And the point is, UK's number one marketing automation, it stands out, you get it. It's simple, easy, clean font. Right, the next thing is, what that then allows us to do, we're executing campaigns, things are going out, people are clicking, people are looking around, people, CRM's pumping data into us. We need to adapt, we need to analyze, and we need to look at, at how things are going. Now, the thing is, if I was to still think the way I did when I was plowing the field with a, with a horse, just one second, I've got my Force 24 water bottle, sometimes talking so much, much, I get a little bit mouth dry. So if I'm still thinking like I did in my old way, what I'll be doing is I'll spend all my time looking at the open and click rates of each of those six campaigns. So I've just added to my effort again. Now, I'm not saying don't do that, but what I am saying is that the more important thing for you guys to do is switch to looking at audience reporting. Now, audience reporting is where instead of looking at all of the individual campaigns, yes, I keep doing that, but I do that at a lower level, I'm using a dashboard of how the audience that I'm talking to is responding. And that takes all the campaigns that, that that audience is receiving, and it gives you stats to see how the audience is responding. It can give you an open rate for the audience, it can give you an open click rate, but it can also present that data on a nice chart to say whether you're going up and down. And this is just an audience engagement timeline. That means a lot to me. If anybody ever came to me and said, oh, we've got a problem, this audience is flat, or for some reason we just can't, seem to get it, our base engaged, I would look at that chart for the audience and I would say, that's your problem. But you're there thinking, what is that chart? Well, that chart is the audience engagement timeline. It's a standard feature within our product and it's everything that we've ever done or they've ever done on one chart. I don't wanna to go into too much detail with that because this is more insightful, this one. The other thing is one of the key metrics that we have to start looking at is, you know, open and clicks, whatever, fine. Uh, but more importantly, when we evolve, you know, so at the moment, uh, email, SMS, WhatsApp, you know, these things are all sort of, you know, sort of primary uh, uh, direct channels. But what about when Netflix opens their doors? What about when Sky TV now has an API for us to push adverts into? Whatever, where we're not monitoring an open rate or click rate, we're actually monitoring something else. That's where we have to look back at this audience. And what this audience is doing is absolutely everything. So start thinking about this now. And when the evolution of marketing starts to unfold, we know we know how to report on audiences, not just campaigns. So what I'm looking at right now is a lead score and a member count timeline. So on that same page that the, the, the engagement timeline was, we've also got this. And so we say, look, every marketeer, 
you maybe don't believe in lead scoring yet, but we do. And we are trying to lead the industry. And we say, because we believe in it so much, every single account has got lead scoring turned on for free, configured for you. And it's really important because what it does is it gives me a friendship index. And this blue line that I have here takes an audience and it shows how their engagement's going up and down based on lead score. And on that basis, I can relate that. Do they like us? Don't they like us? The higher the audience score, the more engaged they are, the more they're loving it, the more they're laughing, the more they're having clapping, the lower it is. Well, that didn't land very well. So I can tailor my campaigns and it much, and bearing in mind, this might be 20 campaigns that have gone to creating this. It is not, you know, and to, to have inferred that from 20 campaigns, it just wouldn't have happened. So looking at the audience gives me a much better insight as to how am I doing at that segment level. Context of the audience could be anything, it doesn't matter. But the point is I can see here, we dropped off a cliff. What happened there? but then we're picking it back up, it's okay. The green line is our nod to predictive analytics actually. But then the next thing is the member count timeline. And I often find marketeers not thinking about this and I think it's critical. So this is the growth of an audience. So we can see that this segment powered by CRM, powered by the website, it's growing. I can't get that from an email open rate report. It's growing, the audience is going up, awesome. But then the green line and the red line are open, are active for email and active for SMS. But what if the audience is growing, but the green line's peeling away? That means as a marketeer, I'm killing more data than I'm collecting. So I challenge you to think, right, okay, you've sent six emails. On every one of those six emails, you have had a bounce rate, you have had an unsubscribe rate, but is it acceptable? Is it okay? Is it greater than the data collection rate? So if you're collecting 50 records a month and you're losing 80 records a month, it's not good, right? So you need to know that and you need to have sight of that everywhere. And are there any particular segments where that's worse than others? That's important for you to know. So as we switch, what we're going to do is we're going to start thinking about these things and we're going to start optimizing what we do based on a broader set of statistics, right down to a contact level. And this is where we're talking about, you know, we want to understand first of all, what the historic data said about them, but also more importantly, what have they been looking at on the website? But all of that data is then stored next to the record. So it's all searchable, it's all accessible for the, by the automation engine. So if you've been looking at this guide, that guide, the other guide, whatever, it's all there, we know that. You don't have to have filled a form it, you're just there. We know that that's you because it's first party tracking for you. Okay, that's awesome. Um, so automation is then gonna take that data for you and it's then going to run automated sequences. So a lot of people believe that automation is all about sending emails, emails or SMS, or potentially WhatsApp, or potentially Netflix, or whatever it might be in the future. Yes, it is. However, it does lots of other things as well. So one of the things that we use it for is about optimizing who I'm talking to. So you don't have to use automation to send an email. Quite often, we're triggering you in to see if you've done something recently, see if your data's changed to put you in a different segment, take you out of a segment, put you in these segments, whatever. And this is just an example of how marketeers can improve their email game by saying, okay, this guy's not opening an email from me in three months. Therefore, I'll put him in an unengaged segment. I'll take him out of my engaged segment. Automatically, I don't do anything. Systems doing it every day of the week. And then if he opens an email in the future, put him back in. So I develop a strategy for my unengaged segment and a strategy for my engaged segment. And these guys get more, these guys get less. And if they do open, they do engage, they do start looking at our website, put them back in the engaged segment and up the, up the cadence. So the point here is automation at its basic heart is about analyzing data, triggering on data and doing something, acting on data. Okay, next thing is we all know this because I've said it so many times and those of you that haven't seen me talk about it, it's understanding what the key to personalization is. If you really, really want to 10X what you're doing, understand personalization is the right message, to the right person at the right time. Did that land? Oops, did I? Anyway, right message, right person, right time. Now, if I think about the futility of my batch and blast comms, it's just good luck that somebody's interested at that time. It's just good luck. Now, if I am able to deliver the right message to the right person at the right times, I'm getting 80, 90, 100% open rate. 80, 90, 100% click rate. 80, 90% goal rate, whatever because I'm delivering the right person. So if I'm getting my four, five, six, seven, 10, 12 open rates, that's great. But you could do so much more by going to triggered comms 
and really focusing on delivering the right message to the right person at the right time. Listen, I get it. We have a requirement from the business to send out communications. That's one of our KPIs in the marketing department is how many people are we talking to? So I get that we got to, you know, it's not all perfect world, but where we should be doing it is where we see there is a data point. They've done this on the website. CRM tells us that we should be communicating to them. So if I take any one of those three components out of the mix, it doesn't work. I send the right message to the right person at the wrong time. Guess what? It doesn't work. Right time, right person, wrong message. It doesn't work. So you have to get all three of those components together for it to be bing, there you go, nailed it. Next thing is, one of the things that, that, that we believe is, is a key part of automation is, is not just ending the surface at the email and the SMS or the advert, whatever it is. It's at that surface extends to the web engagement as well. So in our platform, just like you build emails, drag, drop, drag, drop, you build landing pages, drag, drop, drag, drop, drag, drop. But then those landing pages are also tied to the intermediate engine as well. So when the user arrives, they see what's relevant to them because we know about them. So these are what we call genius blocks. So you build one page and you essentially duplicate blocks and say, so this one's for an anonymous user. We ask them to fill in a form. But if we know who they are, then we say, hey, just have the guide. Just download it. There you go. Same for a webinar. Why get me to register if you know who I am? You know, you just sent me an email saying, hey, Adam, would you like to come to our webinar? And then you click me to go through to an Eventbrite page, which says, enter your first name, enter your last name, enter your date of birth. Enter what? How unconnected is that? So, so we believe that that surface is one of the critical surfaces that marketing automation has to power. If I know who you are, I know you're a plumber, I'll show you content relative to the plumber. And I would love to show anybody that wants to see that because that's a really great part of our system. Again, emails take five minutes to build. Our promise is microsites should take no more than 15 minutes to build. So it's not about hard work. It's about being smart. Okay. Marketing tailored to the individual. Just imagine that. But imagine this. Imagine you're competing against a marketeer who has got that power. Imagine in your game, your competitors, they've already done this. They've done this, they're already there. At the moment, I believe it's somewhere like 32% of the, the addressable audience that can adopt automation has adopted automation. Obviously that's gonna grow and 2030 is the golden number of saturation. So we believe that you've now got the opportunity to really start to forge your path now and start to, to define how your business is gonna work with automation moving forwards. Hi everyone, thanks for watching another recording from Marketing Showcase Online, I hope you enjoyed it. Just to let you know, we've got all of the recordings uploaded to our brand new YouTube channel, so go over there and check it out if you want some more great content. We run these events once every month, free of charge, so head over to our website to grab tickets for next month's event. I look forward to seeing you there.